DNA and Southern Blotting, an animation about how scientists learn about DNA. Have you ever wondered just what it is that makes us different from, say, mice or cats or birds? We are all living things made up of the same basic little units called cells. But if we are all made of cells, why do we look different from other species? It turns out that every single cell in our bodies contains a set of instructions called DNA. This DNA tells cells how to create these differences and controls whether a cell becomes part of a bone or muscle, part of a feather or an eye. It's really very remarkable. Every cell in a single individual of a species has the exact same DNA. The only thing that changes is what parts of these instructions are read. Let's put this another way. Think of DNA as a library. This library contains all of the information used by the cells in your body. However, a cell doesn't look at the library's information all at one time, just like we can't read all of the books in the library at the same time. Cells read this library of DNA one book at a time in order to learn what it needs to do and how it should look. That means a bone cell will use different books than a hair cell. In biological terms, these books of specific information that make up the DNA library are called genes. There are a lot of useful things to learn from studying DNA. We can find out whether or not DNA is healthy and normal. We can learn about how closely related different species of animals are. We can even discover how to cure diseases. How are all of these things done? Well, scientists use a laboratory test called Southern Blotting. It allows scientists to learn several different things about DNA. The test works by breaking the long strand of DNA into differently sized pieces. These small pieces can then be separated by size. When looking at these results, scientists can compare DNA from a healthy, normal cell with DNA from a sick, abnormal cell. Sometimes, the reason for the sickness causes the pieces to look differently in the test. Another thing scientists can do using southern blotting is determine whether or not specific genes, remember the books in the library, are in a strand of DNA. For instance, scientists can test a sample of human DNA to see if a gene for, say, making hair is present. This means scientists can learn some cool things about how animals are related. If human DNA was found to share a gene with panda DNA, that would be an indicator that we are related to each other. If a gene was found to exist only in one species, that tells us that somewhere along the way, pandas and humans became even more different from each other and are therefore less related. That means we won't have genes for that cute white and black fur. The same type of comparison can help scientists learn how to better treat disease in humans. For instance, pretend that we discovered that pandas never get cancer. That means they have some gene that helps them fight cancer. Using these techniques, scientists can see if there are similar cancer-fighting genes in humans. If there are, it's possible to study how to help people better fight against cancer. It's clear that there is a lot more to living things than meets the eye. A whole microscopic world of cells, DNA, and genes. Thanks to techniques like southern blotting, we are able to learn more about these incredible structures. Created using Powtoon.